Kasaysayanong Adlo, everyone, and welcome to the Kabilin Center Saisai Sugbo Podcast. And we are bringing you another Makasaysayanong episode today. Before we begin, let me tell you about the Kabilin Center, the organization that has brought you this podcast. The Kabilin Center, or TKC, is a heritage center that caters to telling the story of the Cebuano through its various projects and exhibits. In this month of July, we are celebrating Nutrition Month. And in this Sai Sai Sungbo episode special, we shall be looking and tasting the different flavors of our very own Cebu. So, just a few words for our podcast listeners. We will be doing a bit of food tasting here in the studio for our different samples of several Cebuano delicacies present here today. But don't worry, we will try our utmost best to share with you the taste of these delicacies. So, we all know that Cebu is no stranger to different tastes and flavors, from the mouth-watering ampao of Karkar to the tasty mandawe masoyal. Many of these delicacies have been the subject of delight for many Cebuanos, but there is much more to know about other underrated delicacies from several towns in the island, like Katmon's Budbud Kabog, the Bingkadawa of Asturias, and the Pintos of Bugo. Many of these delicious treats continue to showcase the diverse culinary culture of Cebu. But how did these delicacies come to be? Did our geography and history play a crucial role in their popularization? And finally, how can these timeless Sabuana delicacies sustain themselves at a time when fast food chains and foreign food brands dominate our modern food culture? In this month's Sai Sai Sugbo podcast, we shall answer these questions by discussing about the origins of several Cebuano delicacies and their impact to Cebuano culinary culture. And we shall also know how these delicacies contributed in the healthy nourishment of the Cebuanos for many generations in the past. I am Miss Sisa and I will be your Makasai Sayanam host today. With me here is our guest, Manuela Alex. She is a food historian and is the author of books on old churches and histories of towns and cities of Cebu, her native province. Her latest book, Hikai, the culinary heritage of Cebu, is closest to her heart as it contains her love for food and for Cebu. Luella was a columnist for Cebu Daily News and hosted Tastes of Cebu, a bi-monthly digital cooking show for the same media outfit. She is a home cook and is a staunch advocate of preserving Cebu's cuisine. She is a firm believer in putting to the fore the indigenous ingredients of Cebu. What gives her most happiness is her family and the love of her grandsons, who miss her cooking in these pandemic times. I would also like to acknowledge our reactor for this session. We have here Sir John Paul Briones. He is currently the program head of the BS Hospitality Management Department at Southwestern University, FINMA. He is also a TESTA certified instructor, cookery NC2, and is a graduate of the International School for Culinary and Hospitality Management in Manila. Yeah, that's correct. All right, right. welcome Thank to you. the show, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you now, for having me. Yes. Now, just a few guidelines before we begin. To keep the talk clear and smooth, profane and unnecessary remarks are highly discouraged in this podcast session. And just a disclaimer, any statements and viewpoints made by the speaker, reactors, and hosts are for general information and for the purpose of this podcast only. Any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. So, let's well, begin. <laughs> well, well, yes. So allow me to begin the conversation by looking at this delicious treat we know as okay. Masayal. Wow. Now, this is quite known to many Cebuanos, yes, especially course, from yeah. Mandawi City. Maybe we can do a little taste of the Masayal yes. here. So That's, I'd like to invite yeah. our guest speaker and reactor to yes. taste it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's taste this and I can tell you the history of this um, very uh, interesting. Masarial. Okay. The name Masa, Masarial is a corruption from the word Maha Real, which means royal paste. It's paste. Oh. And uh, you see, this this came with the Spaniards that, because um, if you notice, this is made of ground peanuts no? mm. and sugar, mainly ground peanuts and sugar. In the old... Uh, 
in Spain, you know, when the Arabs were, um, when the Arabs conquered Spain and Spain started retaliating, there was a famine and the nuns of the convent of San Clemente in Toledo, Spain, started making almond paste oh, mixed with sugar. Mm -hmm. And that is called a masapan. Masapan. Mm -hmm. um, in the other parts of Europe, it's called marzipan. And so you know, mm -hmm. there are marzipan fruits that decorate cakes mm -hmm. that comes from the almond paste mixed with sugar or honey. I think the Spanish friars who came, or the, the nuns who came here, taught uh, some of our ancestors how to make masapan. And then, masapan but yeah. as, as, as I always say, the landscape will dictate your, the food your that you're mm -hmm. going to make. Since there are no almonds here, mm -hmm. they saw that we're peanuts. Yeah. So they started Making experimenting peanuts. on ground peanuts mm -hmm. and sugar. And that became what was called before as Dulce de Mandao. Wow. It was started by uh, the Suico family. Let me check oh, my notes. Okay. Because uh, I think a lot of people made this, but the ones who did this professionally or commercially were the Suico sisters. Mm -hmm. The first one, that is why it's called this, this name, Didams. Didams was Juliana Perez Suico. Mm -hmm. In the 1940s, during the war, they started making this uh, commercially. But before, when they saw this, Ibaligia is a nigo, you know, the flat baskets. Uh -huh. And they, these were not wrapped individually like now. Um, no. they, these were stuck one on top of another. And you uh -huh. see banana leaves, unas, and so the smell of the unas mixed with the with the masarial, with the maharial, mm -hmm. gives gives it uh, an added flavor. Yeah, no? the flavor no. rana, the you know, they were they were sold on migos by women who walked mm -hmm. around the houses and so like that. And then later on, but that was the forties during mm -hmm. World War Two. So it is really somewhat like famine food um, because it gives nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. And sugar, 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 and the high energy, and high protein, 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 and sugar. So protein and sugar. So it it really improved our uh, nutrition during the war years when. Uh, when she died in 1965, this was taken over by a sister. Uh, let me see. It was first it was Juliana, the original, and then the sister Gerarda. Gerarda was called Daddy. Daddy. Remember? Oh, okay. uh, see, Juliana was called Didang, the original one. Yeah. Oh. And then the sister Daddy took over uh, in 1965. When Daddy died in 2001, the daughter of Daddy took over, mm -hmm. and it was uh, Prudentia's week of houses who mechanized some of the processes, uh, no? Uh, and the they started um, doing marketing and uh, proper marketing uh, and all that, and then uh, packaging as well. So, mm -hmm. Lili na unas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that must have been interesting. Yes. But, but, oh, but, but it would not last. Yeah, that's true. That's but then it's the taste food, food paper. the taste of maharial or royal taste maha but you know how you know the name masaria you know how Simonos love to you know, crop words <laughs> the gun, like tamales is called tamaus oh yeah. okay tamales is cooked here but it's called tamaus mawa sa passing ba ang mga words the spanish yeah. words yes. become become uh, Cebuano in yeah. a sense. It's sort of the, taking these words and making them our own. Yes. You yes. Can actually shortcut some of our words like dalan is that. Mm -hmm. no. Balay is but, my... but that practice of shortening the words only is true from the city to the north. Because from the city <laughs> to the south, they pronounce everything. Yeah. Right? Oh. <laughs> but from the city to the north, I think there's a, 
They shortcut it. Like it's only a building. Oh, okay. So, uh, Mamluwala, are there different variations in other parts of Cebu and in the country of Maharyal? Actually, there is not. Oh. It's very interesting to note that I haven't found anything in Luzon. Mm -hmm. really? And only in, in Cebu, it's only in Mandawe that really produces this commercially. Mm -hmm. oh. Maybe they have they do it in, in, in small batches. Yes. But they have done that. If you see how laborious the process is. Mm -hmm. Wow, they really because you know, they buy sacks and sacks of peanuts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shelled peanuts. And then meticulously in the factory, there are women who put this in, in big, big baskets called Nigo and then they pick up the bad peanuts. One by one. One by one. They they do that. They sort through the you know, and then remove. That's why you will never taste um, that bad taste in peanuts. The, the one that has mm. sour the, taste. The, uh, the one that mm -hmm. contains aflatoxin, which is bad yeah. for you. One by one, these are manually removed from mm -hmm. the batches, and then they parboil it. When they parboil it, you have to remove the red skin around it. Mm -hmm. So there are women there who keep doing that. They're just removing the so skin. It's very laborious. Laborious. Yeah. And then afterwards, the only thing that they mechanize is the grounding of the peanuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because before, they just, they really did it with the mortar and pestle mm -hmm. to, to ground the peanuts. So that part they mechanized. And then when they put it on top of the big slab of wood, then the pressing is also made, uh, done by hand. Uh, Can I roll out? Roll like mm -hmm. They used to have, in the olden days, they used to have a wood block with with the name mm -hmm. Dulce de Mandawi in it. Oh, so they would okay. stamp it on stamp the stamp it. Yeah. Uh, that was done by the brother of the two, the brother of Dadin and Didang. <laughs> oh. Modesto did it. So she had a thing. Oh, I think stamp. But they had workers who would do the stamping. Yeah. But then, if if uh, you know, if you get to interview um, Prudentia now, she will show you the original wood block that their brother wow. made. That their brother <laughs> made. Wow. Oh, they kept it. They kept it. But they cannot do it now. They were a They would They would finish. Yeah. The material we all know it as this delicious soft mm -hmm. cookie that contains sugar syrup and ground peanuts, usually wrapped in paper. But mm. before it used to be wrapped in unas, unas, unas. the banana, banana, leaves. banana, banana leaves. Leaves. Yeah, okay. So from then until now, it has remained the same. Yes, and Cebu remains one of the top distributors yes. for it. Yes, yes. The there only there's no other variation. No, the only place where you can get it. Yeah. Yes. And the, if, you, if you have tasted this when you were a, a kid, mm -hmm. it tastes the same now. Because they never changed the, the ingredients. Yes. How, how how fortunate for us that <laughs> our childhood memories can still be yeah. tasted yeah. until now. Mm -hmm. and and it's a bit oily, you know, but it's because fine because it's peanut, 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 yeah, peanuts, peanuts, yeah. peanuts really uh, the oil has that, oil. Yeah, when you extract it. When you it, do uh, peanut butter, it's the, but it's the oil, it's the oil that makes it more delicious, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the same thing. Oh, oh, that's right. In the olden days, I think they used um, honey. But then oh, honey oh. is so hard to come by. Yes, now they yeah, just honey. use sugar. Okay. And then I think we can move on to our next treat. This is quite a treat, especially if you've just come from the south of Cebu. And we have here our um, our wow. Frenchy Ampao from Parcar <laughs> City. So, so the Cebuanos who haven't heard of this, are you even a Cebuano? <laughs> right? Because we all know that Ampao is a sweet, crunchy, puffed rice cake dusted with peanuts again. So there is all it's always shaped in a square and if yeah. you line them up they're all shaped they're it's shaped like a rectangle block. And now you're <laughs> and would you like to taste the apple with me? This is also it's caramelized. Right? Yeah. It's, it's caramelized. No uh, or is yeah, it uh, coated in the sugar? Mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah. story of this. This has a lot to do actually with chicharron. Yeah. Really? Uh, so it's like a kind of a the, byproduct. And, and oh. as I said, also the landscape. Mm -hmm. Karkar is one of the rice producing towns of Cebu. Mm -hmm. That's why they have rice. Yes. The ampao is made of rice that's cooked and then dried in the sun. And then afterwards, this is fried 
in for lard. You fry it for the rice to puff. Mm -hmm. You right? Yeah, to puff up, it is fried in lard. Mm, okay. No. The 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 lard is readily available. Mm -hmm. The lard is readily available. It started also during the war. Mm -hmm. The making of chicharon started during the war when people had to eat whatever is available. Mm -hmm. All of those makers of, of the big makers of chicharon in Karkar come from one family. Mm -hmm. Wow. The Bersenas family. Bersenas. Yes. Okay. Their father started it during the war because he would go around, get the skin from Ano from the market, and then clean the skin and all that and boil them and make it into chicharon. Mm. Because those are scrumplings. Yes. It, it was hard. It was hard to buy meat. It, they didn't have money and all that. So they started making the chicharon and then later on they started selling it. Mm -hmm. Do you dry the chicharon? They dry it. They, oh, dry, they it dry it. In a court or something, a big uh, pavement. Uh... Actually, nowadays they don't dry it anymore. Oh, okay. From boiling, it goes, they, they really start cooking it. Okay. And they, but there's, they fry it twice. They once. fry it twice, okay. The, the second frying is the one that makes it very crispy. Mm -hmm. See, But then the byproduct of chicharron are barrels and barrels of pork, oil. pork, lar pork mm -hmm. lard, pork mm -hmm. oil. You need that to fry a lot of the mm -hmm. rice to puff. Mm -hmm. After the rice is puffed, then they make an amnibal or um, uh, syrup. Mm -hmm. And then they they put that in the in the syrup and then they're um, laid they out scatter it they laid out in, a, in one a layer like pan. that and then they cut it into shapes into squares or rounds ah. like and then so they put that you need chicharron for this mm. <laughs> but is yeah. it safe to say that this is a byproduct of chicharron or no, not really not really a byproduct no, no. because i think they also did it before in these small batches but to make it commercial, you needed those barrels and barrels of oil. chicharron oil, mm -hmm. oil from the chicharron. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. I did not know that one. <laughs> That's connect, very interesting. They're connected <laughs> to each other. There, there, wow. there really is a connection somewhere mm. there. But, so, that's right, so but the rice, but the rice is because they have rice in Karka. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is this a, a purely Cebuano delicacy, or did we inherit this? I from think Cebu maybe from we Spanish? learned that no, from the Chinese. From the Chinese. The, one, the Chinese. The, the word "ampao" is Chinese. Mm. Yes. We learned this from the Chinese. During the Chinese New Year, you give ampao. Sometimes you say, uh, you know, when when people come over, whatever colonized, we get. I'd like to think that. What remains are the best parts mm -hmm. of the colonization. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful way to put it. Man. Yeah, yeah. You just you just appreciate what we learn from them somehow, mm -hmm. which improved our culinary uh, life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add anything, Sir JP? That's very interesting. The way mm -hmm. uh, we borrow from other cultures and integrate, integrate it into yeah. our own. Make it our own. Make it our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ampao and then uh, the chicharron. Ampao is Chinese, and then chicharron is actually Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because yeah. in Mexico they have chicharron. Mm -hmm. In yeah. in in most areas uh, or countries colonized by Spain, you find chicharron. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But I don't think in most countries have have made it as commercially as Qatar as it. The chicharron yeah. from Qatar is still very uh, mm -hmm. very delicious, especially the one with yeah. the meat. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need uh, deep into vinegar. Very good vinegar. Very good it's, vinegar. It's yeah. uh, enough to send people, you know, <laughs> flights of fancy <laughs> other food. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and speaking of other food, let's mm. move on to our next delicacy. So this one In is those. quite yes. This one is quite popular for Cebuanos up north. So we went mm. from north to south. Oh, this so one. We went oh, from south to north yeah. this time. Right, so this is the Pintos. Mm -hmm. It is a cornmeal bar that is traditionally wrapped in 
wrapped and served in corn. In yes. corn husk. Corn, no, corn husk, yes. In the soft yet firm, it's starchy yet moist and simple yet mm -hmm. delightful. Um, it's commonly eaten warm or hot during which time its salty sweet flavor and its soft grainy texture will shine the most. So this treat pairs well with a cup of sikwati and yeah. traditional hot chocolate if you don't have sikwati, no? Okay, so <laughs> bon appetit, Mam mm -hmm. Is there, there another name, name for this? Pintos? No, no, there's no other name for this. It's ah, pintos. Okay. You know, pintos, pintos. as I said. Um, our, our, our delicacies spring from what's available in our... Um, yeah, flora and fauna. Uh -huh. yes. sure. So in Bugo, there's corn. Bugo has corn fields. A lot of it. And sometime, I think also, during the war, a lot of things were invented during that time mm -hmm. because we have to be... Out of necessity. Yeah, uh, necessity. Out of the invention yeah. comes from the necessity at the, yeah. of the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pintos is made of young corn. Young oh. corn that's um, ground. Ground young corn with sugar and milk. None mm -hmm. coconut milk. Mm -hmm. Milk, really milk. Okay. The original maker in Bubu used to tell me when I interviewed her for the book, Mom, it's an alpine, you know, Mom, but it's not alpine, Mom. Oh, it's not alpine, Mom. No, not condensed milk. Oh, evaporated. It's evaporated milk with sugar. And then they, gr they grind it, and then they make a paste, and then they start wrapping the, the with, with the husk. Mm -hmm. And the husk reminds people of the tamales of ah, Mexico. Ah, but the okay. tamales of Mexico is savory. Yeah. It has meat. It this has meat. one is oh. sweet. So it's really ours. Yeah. And so Bubo can claim that this is really ours. Mm -hmm. And that not other people's invention. See? So how do the pintas become so popular in northern Cebu, especially in those areas, Bubo and Medellin? Because they're um, one. Everybody loves corn. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves the taste of corn. And if you add sweetness and creaminess to it, <laughs> it becomes more mm -hmm. it becomes more tasty. You can really taste the corn. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. Because um, it is the main ingredient. You just add in the milk <laughs> or, or uh, you know, mo um, adding moisture to the whole yeah. thing and the sugar. And there is no way you can adulterate it with any other material. <laughs> And then it's boiled, mm -hmm. so it's it's clean because it's boiled for like yeah. an hour. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I love to eat Yeah, and then <laughs> the husk, the husk is important because the husk also Gives contributes the flavor, yeah. to the flavor mm -hmm. the and, fragrance, the yeah. and the fragrance. Mm -hmm. And it is a very environmentally friendly means of packaging. Yes. That's no true. plastic. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Very true. Very, very innovative mm -hmm. and you know, because you, you throw away the house. Mm -hmm. Normally you throw away everything. But they use it for wrapping. But there's no way to mass produce the pit boss. Ah, they're mass producing it in Buko every Oh okay. They they book it by the hundreds or ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but how do they distribute the do they have like a marketing channel or something? Nobody has made it as commercially like Lidams, for example, for, mm -hmm. for you know, they need that. They, I so, think, so it's a bunch of bakers yes. uh, clapped together. Yeah, doing, they do it in oh. each other's houses. And then, you know, like this this one, who, the most famous one, um, does it, does, I think, three batches. And that's all. Because Kapuina, <laughs> although they, they have been helped by them not. LGU mm -hmm. and uh, they have mechanized the, the grinding of the corn because as usual before they had to, oh. they had to use mortar and peasant to grind the mm -hmm. corn. So now they use the, you know, like Lidams in the you know they have a uh, um, corn grinder or the corn grinder. Yes. But in the olden days it was like this circular rock yes, stone, stone the mm -hmm. grinder that you just, just have to uh, we have one in my Lola's house in Argao. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is still preserved. It's right there in the corner. Mm -hmm. And it's a big white circular yeah, and then stone. The, oh. uh, the grooves on the side. Yes, you, the grooves on the yeah. side. And then you put the, the corn on. 
Yeah. They're selling like a whole one. Oh. And then they, the other is one, one of those grinders in Casa Gorgonia. Oh, yes. 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 I remember seeing it during one of the many tours. <laughs> Yeah, that was a regular equipment mm -hmm. in the kitchen. Because you <laughs> grind rice for for bibinga, bibinga for, yeah. for other stuff. Good like board, that. Oh, board. Yeah. So that's that's really how to do it. And um the Buko and Medellin uh, um, makers of, of pintos uh, I think have uh, mastered the making so well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. All they need so really is and sugar. And sugar. Mm -hmm. Wow. And sugar. So um, the fertile landscape up north also helped them probably with their production. There's of corn there. Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. There's corn in in the white because Bugo and Medellin vast yes. valleys so land uh, where they can yeah. plant, it's so nice there. They can plant Medellin is so nice. Acres and acres of oh, corn. Mm -hmm. you see, so as I say, what is available you use. Yes. Uh -huh. And why does this pair so well with Sikwate? Actually, most of our delicacies pair very well with, with Sikwate. Uh -huh. The Sikwate is um, something that we have to thank the Spaniards for, mm -hmm. for bringing the cacao, cacao beans. Actually, it was the Jesuit priests mm -hmm. who brought the cacao seed from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then they first planted it in Negros. But I don't know why it did not uh, fare well in Negros uh, until it was brought to Cebu mm -hmm. and it it flourished. It flourished in Cebu uh, and all that, and then um, in the south, yeah, in yeah, all over, all, all over, over, all over all the okay. island because our climate, I think, is perfect for cacao. Yes. After three years, the cacao tree will start. Flowering. We have a cacao tree in our house. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> and it's so nice to see how colorful yeah. the, the, the pods right. are. Yeah, the okay. colorful pods, that's right. Yeah. What's fascinating about cacao making, out of sequati making, is that um, you need the saliva of most people to ferment really? the beans. So you chew it. That's why. The, the kids, the children, when, okay. when the Lolas used to make um, sequa, uh, tablea, uh -huh. they will give the the meat, the kind of the meat, the meat, oh, the meat. for yeah. the children to, to eat, the, to, and oh, then okay. the, the the seeds are collected. Oh. So you see, the saliva of the yeah. children already coated the beans, yeah. Yeah. and so then they start. <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. They start, they're, 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 they're left there. They're left somewhere to ferment, mm -hmm. and then after that, they wash, and then that's when they start. Um, um, how do you call that? Um, the process. The process mm -hmm. of um, um, cooking it over, or cooking the beans over fire with. You know. So, the the first part, the second mm -hmm. part, no, is the sangang like that. The sangang. And, oh, oh. and then afterwards. They're cleaned again, they're cleaned of the husk, and that's when they grind it. But for the fermentation process to begin, it has to have saliva. So to help how do they ferment. do that at present? Uh, if, I think they introduced a certain enzyme. Yeah, they put an enzyme. Because it's chemically if, if, if you look at the, the documentaries about cacao in, in Latin America, mm -hmm. the the saliva thing is the use. <laughs> <laughs> they spit on it. They spit on it. All right. Yeah. That. So it has human DNA. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When you but drink then, it. You know, when you, when it ferments anyway, you yeah. wash it away afterwards. Yeah. What's, what's the thing? What's the thing? <laughs> it's so, the mucus that binds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. So that's, it. that's one. And then, you know, a lot of my, my friends would say, no wonder if a cow you the lola ang unud sa oh sa cow sa cow niya iyan kuwaw they would just get the seeds after we eat them oh. you see you got the nutrition from the food oh. and your lola got the seeds for your sake <laughs> and you contributed yes yeah. before every household made its own tamlia the discs uh. every household used to make their own tamlia until later on people got tired and you know modernization and all that so we started, uh, we started depending on commercial commercials to do that so we have milangs in Argao yes in yes. Argao uh -huh. and um, 
it's not a I I don't know what you call that a but the the sequate really goes well with mm-hmm. with Ica, with pintos, Mangos. with torta, yeah. with with wood board, mm. perfect pairing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, and the pico. Nowadays, it's an integral part of our painit. Yeah. All of this food that we're eating here comes under the need for dishes for our painit. Pa-init. It's important ah. for the Cebuanos to have something to warm the stomach between meals. Mm-hmm. Because Cebuanos wake up early. Wait, wait. Before breakfast, yeah. they need to have painit. Uh-huh. It's before uh, breakfast, between breakfast and lunch, can, what, what's that? Two hours, no? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You know, it's you have a little wood oh. board. That's too long. Oh. Especially from lunch to dinner. My God, by three o'clock, you're demanding another pie. Merienda. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how yeah. merienda. Yeah, yeah. Filipinos eat five times a day. Yeah, yeah. with snacks in between. Oh, with snacks in between. Oh. Oh. That's that's so that's so Pinoy. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're introducing this diet called intermittent fasting, mm-hmm. where you only eat twice a day, right. and yeah. uh, it, it seems to be uh, mind blowing for us to be one no, one 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 one. One. Yeah. just to eat five times a day, and then intermittent fasting requires you to eat only twice a day. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was going to be very bad for our painit oh. yeah. <laughs> because the painit, all of these things have spawned uh, yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs from our housewives. Mm-hmm. That's true. Okay. And I think we can move on to our mm-hmm. next trade. So I think everyone knows what this is. This is <sighs> the Binga Dawa of Asturias. Asturias. So the, um, would you like to taste it? I don't know if this is the Binga Dawa. Asturias, huh? No. Yes, yeah. Asturias so, so actually is Asturias of Palamban. So, um, the Binka Dawa is a version of Bibinka or rice cake yes. from Asturias, and it's made up of Dawa or Malay sauteed. No, I have to correct you on that. It's not so good. It's Dawa. There's a difference between Dawa and Kabug. Mm-hmm. Ah. Kabug is Millet. Mm-hmm. Kabug is Millet, which is a staple of the Cebuanos before colonization, from as early as. From the earliest uh, recorded uh, no, of, of times of our uh, food, it is featured in uh, Amy Garong's book, Ancient Filipino Diet, when they um, unearthed box with with um, millet, cooked millet inside, mm-hmm. and they had it examined in Japan. It was it was as early, I think, as. The Iron Age when we started giving Wow. Millet. Because Millet, we you see we are not a rice growing island. Mm-hmm. There are only pockets of places where there are rice. And you know when the Spaniards came, they saw bankas from Iloilo bringing rice. We bought mm-hmm. rice because we do not we do not grow rice. We did not grow corn either because corn was brought that's why I said we export, we import our <laughs> yes, <laughs> as one well was really, but then mm. we have been eating um, millet, no, because millet requires little water. It grows mm. on the hillsides, and you just harvest whatever is there, and it it propagates itself because the seeds will fall on the ground and that sprout new mm-hmm. new plants. See, and then the dawa is a is really bird seed. It's the small grain that you give your parakeets or your mm. your lovebirds. Mm-hmm. That's what they give that. that that's 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 dawa. Okay. And um, you know the rice cake is one of the well documented um, delicacy of Cebu. Pigafetta writes that when he, they witnessed a ceremonial event. He said he described it that you know before the ceremony started they brought in a table and then they brought in flat baskets filled with rice cakes and millet cooked in banana leaves. What would come What was there when oh. when uh, Magellan and Pigafetta were oh, yeah. around? Yeah. They witnessed that that ceremonial killing of a pig actually, mm-hmm. and then. They placed that in on tables, decorated tables with the so the rice cake was already described. Mm-hmm. The rice cake um, 
can be called um what you call this uh-huh if it is baked meaning to say dry cook dry mm -hmm. it is bibinka if it is um steamed oh. it becomes puto mm. so it's the method of cooking uh -huh. that differentiates mm -hmm. with the same ingredients rice which is flour, flour. ground rice ground rice okay sugar sugar and um Starch. coconut milk that's oh. all rice sugar coconut milk if you want it to rice you add it to buff as leavening agent so we don't have flour we don't have our own no flour. no flour we didn't grow wheat then yet yeah okay. but then we ground the rice mm -hmm. yeah, to, okay. to be as fine as flour Yes. And then the bibinka is like a the double double oven. And the double oven is called those fuego. There's husk in at the bottom fire. and then there's another mm -hmm. husk uh fire which is below, flame. fire below and fire, fire on above. top. Yeah. See, that's why when you say uh there's a there, double you say that <laughs> you are in a bibinka. <laughs> very, very bad. You're in a bad, bad situation. Stay, yeah, fire up there, fire down below. <laughs> You're in a very bad, bad okay. situation. Yeah. You're about to get cooked. So that's okay. it. So the rice cakes were already written about. So this is a pre-colonial mm -hmm. dish that we have been making. Yes. Yeah. So if you steam it, it's puto. Yeah. If you bake it, it's bibinka. Bibinka. Wow. Yeah. And then you can add anything actually. If you put a little dawa. Okay. Then it will take on the taste of the dawa. Mm -hmm. And if you put white sugar, then it becomes a white bibinka. Mm -hmm. If you use um, muscovado, yes. which is kinugai, mm. then it becomes brown, which mm. is also used in Asturias. Yes. It's Most the sugar. brown sugar with dawa in it. Mm -hmm. that's, so, that's what would be the is. most accurate name for this one we have here in Hungary? It says the bibinka. Bibinka. The bibinka. You know, there's bibinka sa katmon, mm -hmm. which is um, uh, the difference with bibinka sa katmon is that it has no limiting agent. It has no tuba. The one in the most iconic one is the bibinka sa mandawa. Mm -hmm. It's it is the bibinka. The bibinka. Wow. The bibinka is the one of mandawa. Yeah. Because it, they have refined it, the cooking of the bibinka. And it's so violent. And there's a violet color. Um, you just you just use violet rice. Ah, you okay. grind violet rice and mix it with with ordinary rice, and they use glutinous mm -hmm. glutinous rice too. Just in Mandawe, they they use tuba to make it rice, mm -hmm. you know? and then the tuba gives it a special yeah. a special flavor. See, so and then. After several hours, they start cooking it, and before it is cooked, they Put they the sprinkle it with oh, okay. um, coconut. That's uh, shredded coconut, mm -hmm. so it gets cooked with it. See, so when you open it, you can smell the coconut, the young coconut, and the and the lovely smell of the rice that mixed with the coconut milk. Mm -hmm. So it's so creamy. So Indonesia, but then. Other places will make their bibingas unique mm -hmm. to them, for them to be remembered too. That's true. So you have to, um, you know, admire mm -hmm. the people in Asturias to make their bibinga uh, different from the other. What do they say? Uh, you look for the crack of the bibinga because that uh, gives it more character and more taste. Yeah, that means it's cooked. Properly. Properly cooked. <laughs> Why he loves the food? Why he loves the food? Exactly. If it's cooked and um, hurriedly. Yes, there is a crack. There is a crack. If, if you cook it hurriedly, then sometimes, you know, the, the rice is not yet cooked oh, inside. In the center. Mm -hmm. In yeah. the center. Oh. So if there is a crack, it's well cooked. So, oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay. So that's what so, that means. So if you eat the bingka now, you are eating the same delicacy. That our ancestors ate. How lovely is that? No? So through the centuries, you are still eating the same thing. Since the Iron Age. Yeah. Iron you have Age. a connection. You have a connection with our ancestors because mm -hmm. this is what they ate. And it's this still available now. now. And it's yeah. a good thing that we have not forgotten how to yes. make it. Yes. 
Uh, our culinary is tradition is still very much alive. Yeah, alive. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's so, the beauty of it all. Mm -hmm. no? So it's good to have something from way back then. So yes. we're still tasting now. How comforting. Now. Yes. How comforting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so we're heading, we're heading back to the south of Cebu again for our next treat. So this treats? one is popular, especially for our Goanons mm -hmm. and the Lequetenons out there. So here we have, if the you torta. would please, Sir JP, mm -hmm. the Torta de Argao, or simply Torta. So to describe it for our um, listeners out there, the Torta is a rice, spongy, and sweet pastry prepared in a unique way of cooking. And with special ingredients. So it's somehow like a sponge cake in texture, right? Like a mamon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This but is tuba also, actually. Yeah, the yeah. leavening agent. Yeah, the yes. leavening agent. Okay. The torta. Yes. So that stuff could be surprising for some of our listeners, know that, that this one contains tuba. So the traditional coconut wine. The, the, the torta. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of history involved in the making of the torta. You start with um, our, the, the Augustinian friars who started building our stone churches mm -hmm. in the south. Using coral blocks. Mm -hmm. These are made of coral blocks that have been trimmed and then stacked one on top of another. In the absence of cement, they needed to have a binder. <laughs> really? Okay. 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 Yeah. So the binder called the... Like a paste. A paste. To keep it together. The binder or the argamasa consisted of one uh, lime, apple, the sap of the lava tree, that's Ooh. the one they use for shampooing because it's very thick, mm -hmm. and egg whites. Oh. So, egg whites, huh? Take note how many thousands of egg whites or eggs were used to finish, for example, the agua yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thousands of it. No. Do you think they threw away the egg yolks? Because they can only use the Saya kayo. Saya yeah. kayo. Uh. So in most places where there are old stone churches, mm -hmm. there is a tradition of making uh, oh, wow. not just torta, uh, sweets or delicacies made from with egg, egg yolks. Mm -hmm. So you have number one, torta, <laughs> you have leche flan, you leche have flan, cocina yeah. del tielo, you have niemas. Mm -hmm. These are all yeah. made with egg yolks. So it is not just in Arcao. You go to Oslo, they also make Yes. yes. You don't go Oslo to, has beautiful churches. Uh, uh, you go to Hinatila. Everywhere where there's an old stone church, yeah. there would be delicacies, delicacies made of egg yolks. Egg yolks. Egg yolks. Egg yolks. In, in Arcao, though, they have made it commercially. Yeah. Because it's really good. The, yeah, the, the, really the, the ones made by who's this? Um, what's the most famous one in? in I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to know this. Uses for one recipe. She uses, but this is in commercial one. Mm -hmm. 120 egg yolks every day for each batch. Oh, for each batch. Wow, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, but this with this. Because you know, look, huh? when, the, when the Chinese arrived, what did we get culinary wise? We learned to um, use oil. We learned to fry. Mm. With, uh, we learned to use. Uh, we learned to use soy sauce. Oh, yeah, from the Chinese. When the when the Spaniards arrived, what did we learn? We learned how to be sal. On this album with apple yes. Oh, I did it. A stir fry is Chinese. Oh, okay. But for the gisal, for the basis of our soups, our mini salad, oh, okay. we use garlic, onions, kamatis. So what's gisal and what's gisal? Gisal is to gisal is to saute. We okay. learned to saute from the Spaniards. Oh, okay. You see? What man I before derecho naman tayo nana, but we learned to add more spices and more um, herbs into mm -hmm. our food, no? So part of that is, and then so that's a, a, a method of cooking that we learned, no? From the Spaniards, we also learned how to bake basic to make basically mm -hmm. to make basically, no? So this is 
this is used, this is baked in an oven of some sort. And it, this formed um, the necessity for clay ovens. The mm -hmm. clay ovens are still being used in Atau, in their torta making. And where did we get that? From Simunga, which has a thriving um, and a, mm -hmm. a clay industry. Okay. Nasi. I remember, Mangoy, that in our old house in Argao, mm -hmm. we would put, my grandmother would put the torta trays mm -hmm. in the attic. To make uh, it rise. To make it rise. Yes, ah, okay. because when you mix everything, then you add the tuba, you put that in, 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 in the, the molds. Uh, behind the yes, in the individual uh, the molds. molds. Oh. Then they're allowed to rise. Mm -hmm. When it reaches the peak, mm -hmm. then they, they started baking. They start baking. Ah, that's why because, they put it there in the attic. Oh, so oh. you children will not touch it <laughs> because you always poke your fingers into everything, ah, okay. especially the boys. No? But basically it's for it to rise. Yes, to rise ah. and disturb. <laughs> because yes. it has to ferment, and you know, it has, it has to, to ferment. No, not ferment, but to grow. To grow. To grow. Oh. That means yeast. Yeah. To rise. Yeah, to rise with yeast. Instead of yeast, it's to buy. Because oh. So bump. that's why to buy is included in the making of torta. Yes. Oh. Okay. They don't use baking powder or yeast. They use to buy. In a cup. Yes. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. This one. No, there's that to buy. You didn't smell that the yeah. to buy in there. Mm -hmm. But then, um, can you use so, rum? No, it, uh, you you can, you can rum is rum. not a living agent. Ah, I see, I see. I see. So they but tuba, tuba is alive. Tuba is is alive because it's the sap from the coconut trees. Yes. So it has it's, bio. Uh, yes, it, it it has. I don't know the, what the chemist will say. It it's a live thing that it. That's why it can still grow. Mm -hmm. That's why it turns. It's like yeah, yeah. Probiotic. Probiotic, yeah. Then yeah. you can turn it into vinegar if you want. See, so it's a live thing that mm -hmm. that will transform itself chemically but on its own. It's a microbe. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. that too. That too. But then, as I said, you learn. We learn how to soak, uh, how to uh, fry mm -hmm. by the uh, by the Chinese, Chinese uh, and then you will learn to how to saute by the Spaniards. the Spaniards as well as to. To bake, bake. Mm -hmm. yeah. to bake na, na kay frying naman tungo sa Chinese, and then we bake with the. Pero kung bibingka is kind of baking also. Also, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, but that was our big kind of. Baking. Our kind of baking. Mm -hmm. Our kind of baking. We didn't use clay pots, or clay ovens. We used uh. Oh. How did, I don't know what we used. We used clay. Clay ovens with coconut husks above and above below. Above. We, we still use, but the was sophisticated na lang when it came to the Spaniards', Spaniards way right. of, of, the, uh, of, of making things. Mm -hmm. And mostly we learned how to cook all of this, yes. all of these delicacies during the Span that Spanish inspired. Mm -hmm. From the priests and the nuns who came here, the nuns especially. That's why we have delicacies in Karkar, like they got their, uh, we have this. Oh my God! What's the name of this dish? Karkar oh, Kar has this round pastry with yema inside. Masi? No, no, no. no. Yema. It's, it's, the it's like it's like. Uh, I own. Yeah, I forgot because it's being sold everywhere right now. Yeah, every, pe people tend to bring it out of mm -hmm. the of the town where it came from. Like pintos. When I see pintos, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so, see, that's, it's it's really like that. Oh. So, Mama, if I may ask, since they use egg yolks here, and mm -hmm. back then they used the egg whites to bind cement. Yes. So, what do they use the egg whites on now? Since we don't need, the, we don't oh, need cement. You can make meringues out of it. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's right. There's also so yeah. many meringues mm. in that area. Mm. You make it the one in Gargal, the, the one with the color. Yes. It's pink and it's white yes. and it's yellow. Oh. Uh, that's from the egg white. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, because you don't throw away the. Yeah. Yeah, we. And you imagine we don't use. We don't throw. No. Yeah. We're the first. We do not our pork, and yeah, we use everything, even the yeah. brain. <laughs> <laughs> the brain, especially. Yeah, the brain, especially. <laughs> yeah. So that, so that's it, and it it also goes very well as I mm -hmm. with sikwate again. Yes. No. Sequatting goes well with all of our delicacies. All of our delicacies. Yeah. Good job. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, Mom Lloyd, talking to you uh, makes me miss my grandma. Oh. Because yeah. she would tell us stories about our food, about the land, about our gal, and how things were so simple back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody has to keep, somebody has, that's that's why I, I, I think I went into um, researching about food, food history, because one, um, one, one of us has to do it. I think, yeah. and I could think if someone has to do it, and if I could do it, I, 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 I went into it willingly. And then, if there are others who would like to follow, I, I would be very happy to, to, you know, to show them the way, mm -hmm. talk about it with them. Because the important thing is, we will never lose the yes. the mm -hmm. knowledge, not the to tradition. lose the traditions. Yeah. To, to keep our traditions alive. Mm -hmm. but, but with all of this, one is we keep this alive by by um, continuing by, by, by buying from our local yes. from yes. Our local supporting our local markets. Yeah. Market. By mm -hmm. being kind instead of hot cake or by wood <laughs> wood instead yeah. of Burger. donuts <laughs> or things like those. Yeah. Make, make make room for our local delicacies mm -hmm. in yeah. your diet. Yeah. That's how you keep it alive, yeah. and, and if, if by writing about it and writing how it is done, I, I could keep the tradition alive. Um, I think uh, my 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 life mission mm -hmm. would be would be complete. You know? Brother Mamoy, we actually our generation, we owe you a lot of gratitude. Yes. Yeah, especially the generation uh, growing yeah. up now, because yeah. yeah. uh, they're. You know, bombarded with so much uh, information that they actually would prefer uh, food products that are stacked with so much preservatives mm -hmm. and yes. junk food and so so much junk food. Yeah, yeah. all over, mm -hmm. all over. Yeah. And it's so available. It's so available, readily readily available by its stores. Mm -hmm. But these ones, we have to have fairs so that this will be available. Because, but one thing is. If we keep going around our our um, island, mm -hmm. then we we could we could buy this from this, but it needs more marketing, yeah. no? Yeah, you can see that our products need more marketing. Mm -hmm. the I think, I, yeah, I think I bit into something. Is this star anise? Yes, the torta has anise. Ah, oh, okay. has anise. I just bit into it. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. No, torta is a tradition. Uh, the anise is a traditional. Um, flavoring for the tonka mm -hmm. anise. Okay. It's star anise, uh, uh, not star anise. I know anise, 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 anise. Yeah. anise. star yeah. anise is uh, like cloves. Yeah. yeah, it's for That's, the next one. Mm -hmm. Oh, also it's more for savory. Humba. It's for humba. <laughs> it's star humba. humba. Star anise is for humba. Yes. Okay. What's this red mark on the torta? Um, it, That's it's. I think just the one of the, uh, okay. the maker. I see. See, and but it would be best if you could buy um, all of these things from the towns where they really originate, mm -hmm. because the ones you buy from Arcao really, re really taste different from what you buy in the city, mm -hmm. and then they're made fresh. So yes. like they just bake it today and you buy it. It it makes a lot of difference <laughs> between something that has been yes. baked several days before. And even, yeah, the bibinka. The bibinka is something you cannot eat bahaw, mm -hmm. especially the ones from uh, Katmon, because the ones from Katmon has no leavening agent. So wala mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So when it's cold, it becomes hard. Mm -hmm. So you eat it while it's still warm from the open. That's 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 how. It, but you only know it from observation, you know. Not everybody is so mindful. <laughs> in in Argo, there's a saying, magkabahaw magalami. That's the best part of the Argao uh, Torta mm -hmm. because it can stand for at least five days. Wow. Five days. Five days ang kuanila. It, it's still... Uh, the, the, it's more delicious on the fifth day. On the, it's perfect on the third day. It's perfect on the third day. day. Uh, Beyond that, it's there's a lessening of the uh, quality of the uh, But third day is not more than three days. Para uh, sa okay. Nice. But that was the torta from Argao. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there are other tortas like 
Kinabilan has Torta, so good has Torta. But all of these towns have stone churches. Mm -hmm. That's why it, it it's like a it's it's like a clue when you you when you buy something from a, a town that has a torta, you can you can see that they have an old church. Uh, okay. So the tradition of using egg yolks uh, comes egg from whites. that fact. Yeah. Imagine because they use egg whites on the stone. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow, okay. that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. And now I believe we can move on to the last stop, oh. the culinary journey. Okay. So our last delicacy is the Pasalubong Champion here in the Philippines, especially here in Cebu City. What we have here is our ah, the dried, dried mangoes. mangoes. Dried yes. Mangoes. So mm -hmm. let's taste the dried mangoes. So I think we all know yeah, that. This is very popular in Japan. Really? Yes. It's very popular in Japan. You know. Because I have a Japanese friend, and then when she came here, she just she had to get some uh, dried mangoes because they were very expensive in Japan. Mm -hmm. These are very expensive in Japan, and but, the Japanese they just love this. So oh, and here it's just for pasalubong. So oh. the dried mango is made out of dried out ripe mangoes that can be served as an appetizer mm -hmm. or dessert mm -hmm. for dinner. So every bite of the mango is always chewy. It's always delightful. No? So let's try. It sprung from the fact that mangoes are hard. To to send abroad, mm -hmm. it does not it does not uh, do well uh, traveling um, because the the cop, you know the peel the mango peel is is the mango really is a delicate thing. Mm -hmm. When it's green, you can still transport it, but you're not sure that it will arrive intact when mm -hmm. it arrives there. So I think in the eighties. Our mango, our mango growers started thinking of means or ways to preserve, to, to, to export our mangoes in another form. And they experimented on how to preserve it as, 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 as it is now. So this is relatively new. Oh, yes. Well, in the 80s, funny, yes, uh, late mm. 70s, 80s, they started mm. experimenting. 1970s, 80s. Yes, oh, they started experimenting oh. now. Because sometimes we'd have, there's a glut of mangoes, mm -hmm. and they just rot. Because mm -hmm. you cannot sell it to the in the local market sometimes. It's kind of gravity, but. So you have to think of ways to preserve it. And this is how... This is the outcome of that of that effort. By I think the one who started was like 70, Ooh. 70 mangoes. Seven, mm -hmm. seven, seven letters, uh, number seven, and then D. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's be for, but they started experimenting on it, and it's it's quite a process, huh? Because they they put sugar in it and then they allow the sugar to mm -hmm. to drain to drain the uh, the mango slices dry mm -hmm. and then there's a drying process but still, they they were able to um, they were able to dry the mangoes in in this manner that oh. it can survive mm -hmm. months outside the yes. Philippines. <laughs> but you know our mangoes are still the best tasting mangoes yes. yeah Mexican mangoes are. Mm. <laughs> I went to Thailand and we saw this See? huge mango. They look so good, but it was so big. Yes. Uh, but when we tasted it, uh, it tasted different. It didn't and taste like mango at all. I think, you know, it's in the soil. Yeah. It's in the, the soil. soil of Cebu is perfect for mango mangoes. Growing. Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah, like Guimaras. Guimaras is another island that grows good mangoes. Mm -hmm. But in other, in Luzon, only the Pangasinan mangoes also taste as sweet as mm -hmm. ours. But I think it's in our soil. You know, like nanka, there's nanka all over the place. But if you eat nanka or jackfruit from Cebu, mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I think God, in all his <laughs> generosity, gave us the best nanka in the world. Wow. Yeah, yeah. you know, I served that to to those Italian, yeah, I know, um, southwestern, uh, oh, oh, in oh. southwestern, uh, one day, uh, three years ago, I think. And then I, what I did was I said, now I will let you taste the jackfruit as it is, the ripe jackfruit, mm -hmm. so they tasted it. And then now you taste this one, which I 
um, soaked in um, cognac. So when they tasted the one in cognac, the boys were swooning like a little bit. See, God in all his generosity made our dung cup so sweet and so plump, so good, that when I paired it with the, you know, Yeah, with this French creation, mm -hmm. it is a marriage made in heaven. Wow. So, like, swan get to Italian students, they never wow. tasted anything like it. Mangos, I also, I, I also put cognac on mangos. It's perfect. It's perfect. Wow. Yeah. It's, I think, we are so blessed in Cebu to mm -hmm. have uh, very good fruits and uh, very. Uh, how to call that um, and uh, traditions that still um, mm. abound, yes. that mm. are still around, and we should we should continue to to promote that, no? Culinary wise and mm -hmm. history wise. In our village in Argao, uh, if we stay there, five o'clock in the morning, someone would be shouting "Liko." Mm. <laughs> Liko, would no? Mm. On, on those "Migo" to this very day. <laughs> To this very day, uh, we cannot find that here anymore in the city. Yeah, but in the provinces, people still sell it. Nagi mo suri suri ko maligya biko. I I had to maka matamoy sa pag isa biko. What is that? Managlibot in in Silay. That tradition is still very much alive in in Negros and Silay. They they call that the managlibot. They were given everything. <laughs> your alarm clock, your alarm clock is Biko. <laughs> it's very Filipino. Very, it's very, very Cebuano. Yeah. Yeah. So did you know, Mamoy, that um, according to a European market study, the Philippines is an emerging leading export of dried mangoes, and Cebu is one of the leading export hubs here in the Philippines wow. for these delicacies. I would say we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. We should invest in dried mangoes. Yes, I think we should. Yeah. And it also promotes our culture. It keeps the tradition alive. Yes. And hopefully we can bring our other delicacies, our other treats abroad so that they can also get a taste of what we have here in Cebu, right? And we should, our, our manufacturers or our, our makers of Ampao, for example, because this is very exportable, should improve the packaging, the packaging mm. or improve the um, The taste, There's or can add something to it, more peanuts perhaps, mm -hmm. that just one lonely peanut on top. <laughs> and um, to make Rice it more, crispies. yeah, to, yes. more, to make it more marketable. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I can imagine be, this being sold in the U.S. Yes, yeah, um, I can very much imagine it being it's, sold there. It's very, yeah, and it's very portable. You can bring it anywhere. Yeah. It's under the umbrella of Rice Krispies. You mentioned that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think kids, unfortunately, uh, nowadays would recognize Rice Krispies more than Ampao. They'd yeah. say, oh, Rice Krispies! Yeah. <laughs> Because Ampao has a very, it has a derogatory you know, meaning. Really? When, when one of when house builders build houses that are easily to, easily destroyed, mm -hmm. they say, okay, Ampao man ang mga walls. Ah, um, okay. Very thin, right? Very thin. Thin and easily cracked. Yes. Ah. It's it's in the it's in the carpentry term. Ana ang bumbong niya ang pau. It's destroyed easily. Yes. So, okay. You know. <laughs> so um, I'm like um, we're as we're ending our okay. podcast today. Um, how do we keep these treats relevant? Because Cebu's food industry is always growing, it's always changing, there's always something new every day. So how can they stay relevant to our current food environment? Well, for one thing, as I said, one, we should improve our our, our processes and, and our improve marketing. our marketing. The and distribution. We, yes. Yeah, the distribution. And we as buyers should buy local. Mm. We should, uh, yeah, we should endeavor to buy our local support local uh, yes, businesses businesses mm -hmm. not just in food even uh, in clothes and whatever yeah. else that you need buy local buy that's local. how you support yes. the industries that's also how we make them sustainable yes. in the years to come yes. especially with new brands from foreign countries coming in here to yes. sell their products mm -hmm. and they make it so attractive yes. that's one thing we should make it our packaging more attractive that's true. one well, of the projects of a foundation is supporting smes smes 
Yeah, the small uh, and medium small and medium industries. And uh, there are a lot of mga uh, negosyante na moms na who are cooking these at home and then selling it in the local market. Mm-hmm. And um, some of them are selling it online. And yeah, the pandemic has, yeah, has made, us, the pandemic, uh, made us buy online. <laughs> so uh, look at Facebook and look at the local food catalog. If it's local, support it. Yes. Buy it from them. Yes. Yeah. That's it. And I think one of the challenges is encouraging young Cebuanos to preserve yes. the culinary traditions of ah, Cebu. That's one last thing, Claire. Mothers should consciously expose their children to this local food. Because somebody said, I, I, I often quote, uh, quoted that, is that, nationalism is just basically your memory of Mm-hmm. Uh, food that you ate in your childhood, which is That's a true. comfort food that you remember. Mm-hmm. If our young ones have not tasted bibinka or ampao or good wood or, or or pintos, they won't have that memory. You have to introduce the memory to your children. So it should be a conscious effort mm-hmm. from all of us, mothers, Teachers, fathers, everybody should um, do it consciously and expose our children to our native cuisine so that they will have a memory of this when, they're, when they grow up. Yeah. Nowadays, when, uh, people my age, when you're out there somewhere else, the, you know, the mere thought of eating chicharron would you say, Ay, mapauli na ako. <laughs> Mingaw na kayo. And then the mere thought of, you know, si kuate and manga and wood wood mm-hmm. would, would make you teary-eyed thinking of, you know, all the all the painit that you have eaten when you were young. Yes. So if we do not expose our young people to this, they won't have memories of their country at that age. Because food is the earliest memory that we all get. Aside, of course, from our mother's milk and our mother's stuff. But second to that is what you are exposed to as a child. It should be a conscious effort mm-hmm. on our part. So thank you for those words, from Lois. Sir JP, would you like to add anything else? Yeah, uh, as part of the education sector, I would love to echo mm-hmm. your yes. teachings to our students um, for the sake of pres- uh, preservation. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Our traditions and our culture is something that we we have to promote. Yes, that's yeah. that's very good. In our PE, mm. we have one <laughs> PE class that we play uh, cooking, games. cooking, oh, 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 and Japanese Shato. game. Shato, Shato. Yes. <laughs> oh, because nobody plays that In now your, yes, anymore. Yes. Everyone is like, you know, doing yes. this. Virtually. Yeah. Everybody is playing virtually, not actually. <laughs> Which is so sad. Yeah. So, so sad. So that's what we're doing. We're preserving our culture through education. Yes. Yeah. And this so is all our... sectors. It's 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 an effort that should be um uh, multi-sectoral. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And done consciously. That's how Thailand gives it. They they they, they the government really puts its uh, effort into it. Yes. They, uh, hopefully the Philippines could also do the same. Yeah, we pray. Yes. <laughs> that is the hope. <laughs> yes, we pray. That's well, why we would love to have you in South Western. Oh, I, I will always be available. Just invite me. <laughs> okay, I will invite you. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. so um, to sum it all up, we went from a cereal to ampao to pintos, bibinka, torta to dried mangoes. Yes. No, and then we learned that masarial is um vilification of the term maharial. Yes. We learned that ampao it originally came from chicharon because it uses pork lard mm-hmm. that comes from the cooking of chicharon. Um, we have the pintos with its soft grainy texture from mm-hmm. the north of Cebu and delivered beautifully in a corn husk that's very good for the environment um mom lawyer recommends bibinka from katmon because it's different than all the bibinkas <laughs> out there in cebu and torta torta 
comes from the egg yolks because the egg whites were used to help bind together cement to build stone churches. And the instead of cement. Yes, instead of cement. So dried mangoes were um, were are fairly new. They're not as traditional as the mm. other delicacies we tried yes. today, but they came from the need to be trans uh, to transport mangoes in a way that wouldn't let them rot easily. Yes, yes, yes. yes. and it's now one of the most iconic Popular, food staples yes. or pasalubongs if you if mm. you're coming from the Philippines yeah. to another country. And Manuel told us something very important, which is food is the earliest memory that we all get. And without um, without parents teaching their children the joys and delicacies of their native land, it is almost impossible to sustain these kinds of delicacies. That's very so true. hopefully in the future we can um, hopefully in the future we will see better marketing or better distribution of our oh, delicacies yes. because they're all great. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. No. So I would like to acknowledge and thank our speaker, Ramuela Alex, for being with us here today. My for, pleasure. Yes, thank you for your valuable time and your expertise in Cebu's culinary histories, uh, history in these showcase of Cebuano delicacies. So thank you so much, Ramuela. And Sir JP, thank you as well for being with us here today. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. We, we enjoyed your input. Thank you so much for interacting with us. Yes. This is a very, I love the interaction here today. It was when very... there's food, call me. Yes, and for our viewers on YouTube, leave us a like and subscribe on our channel, The Kabilin Center, and share us your thoughts down below in the comment section. For our listeners on Spotify, stay tuned for more sessions where we tackle more subjects and topics on Cebuana history and culture. And I would like to acknowledge the team behind Sai Sai Sugbo, the Kabilin Center team. So thank you so much to our production manager, Ms. Heidi Palapar, our production assistants, Daniel Alatraca, Sigrid Garcia, MacGyver Mankikis, our interns, Daniel Dominic Belen and Megan Bedonia, and our editor, Sir Daniel Alatraca. This has been your host, Miss Sisa, wishing everyone a makasaysayan ng adlaw. Thank you so much.